Alibaba is one of the most controversial stocks in the market right now. Many investors believe the stock is extremely undervalued based on its financial metrics, while many other investors believe the stock is completely uninvestable due to it being in China. Alibaba is a stock I own in my portfolio, and it also reported its earnings yesterday. The stock was mostly flat on the day of its report, but today it seems like it is having a much stronger day. So I went through Alibaba's earnings, transcript, and investor presentation to find all of the key highlights that investors need to know. And in today's video, I want to share those highlights with you. I will also be sharing whether I think the stock is looking cheap today and what I am planning to do with my position. So with that being said, let's just hop right into the video. All right, so as always, I took some screenshots from the report and let's just go through them quickly. So right away, this is at the top of Alibaba's earnings report and this is from the CEO where they say, our results this quarter demonstrated our strategy at work. Our focus on enhancing user experience by offering quality products at attractive prices with great service led to stabilizing market share of Taobao and Tamal Group. As we return the business on the growth trajectory, the cloud business achieved positive revenue growth momentum driven by public cloud and AI related product adoption as we continue to invest to maintain our market leadership. In this quarter, we continue to invest for growth in our core businesses while reducing losses in other business units through operating efficiency. We also made $5.8 billion of share repurchases. So for those of you who may not know or have not been following Alibaba stock, the company is kind of going through a turnaround phase right now. What they're doing is selling off some of their non-core business units, and they've sold off a few over the past year. And they're also focusing back on improving the efficiency and profitability of the core business. One other thing that they're doing is they're running off low margin and cloud business revenue and they're trying to gain high quality cloud revenue that's much more profitable. So we're kind of seeing like a runoff of some of the cloud business revenue. And then we're also seeing an increase in high quality cloud business revenue, which is overall causing the cloud business to see lower top line revenue growth right now while they're still running off that low margin business. So keep that in mind as we go through this report. Now, moving on to the business highlights, this does say that revenue was up 4% year over year. However, income from operations declined 15% year over year, primarily due to a reversal of share-based compensation expenses. Net income also declined by 27% year over year, primarily due to the decrease in operating income. Non-GAAP diluted earnings per share was also down 5% year over year, and net cash from operating activities was down 26% year over year, and free cash flow was down 56% year over year. The decrease in free cash flow was mainly reflected in an increase in capital expenditures related to the company's investments in Alibaba Cloud. So when I take a look at these numbers, what I'm seeing is revenue did grow slightly by 4% year over year, but all of the other profitability metrics are down quite significantly. Again, operating income is down 15%, net income is down 27%, Earnings per share is down 5% and free cash flow is down 56%. So it seems like Alibaba's profitability did decline significantly year over year. Now, if we go and take a look at the cash flow statement, again, we can see that operating cash flow was down year over year. However, the company did still produce $4.63 billion in operating cash flow in the quarter. However, we can see that the capital expenditures basically did double year over year to 12 billion RMB, which is about 1.64 billion US dollars. And therefore we can see that free cash flow was cut in half to about $2.4 billion on the quarter. Again, this is due to the operating cash flow being down and the capital expenditures basically doubling year over year. So free cash flow was hit pretty hard in this quarter, but Alibaba is still a profitable company and did produce $2.4 billion of cash flow. Now down here, we can see that the share repurchases for the quarter was about $5.9 billion. This ultimately means that Alibaba did dip into its cash position to buy back shares this quarter because they bought back more shares than they produced in free cash flow. So the free cash flow did not cover the share repurchasing and that therefore, again, the company did have to use some of its cash to buy back shares. Now, in my opinion, that is not a bad thing at all because Alibaba is very cash rich right now. And the company's stock, in my opinion, is significantly undervalued and they're getting very high yields and returns on these share buybacks. So I think that they should actually continue buying back shares at a very fast rate, even if it means dipping into the cash position. Now down here, we can see that cash and cash equivalents did decline quarter over quarter, and the company is now sitting on $30 billion of cash. Short-term investments also dropped quite significantly, down to about $24.2 billion. However, the company's other treasury investments did more than double quarter over quarter, and are now sitting at $30 billion. 
In total, the company's cash balance is sitting at $84.4 billion, and its net cash position after subtracting all of its debt is sitting at $55.8 billion. And keep this in mind because we are going to use this $55.8 billion when we, when we calculate Alibaba's enterprise value later on in this video. But overall, again, the company is still very cash rich. Now moving on to the company's business segment performance, we can see that its main business segment, which is its e-commerce platform, did see its revenue actually decline by 1% year over year. However, this business segment is the most profitable business segment by far, and it did produce 48.8 billion RMB in adjusted EBITDA. Now what's also interesting is Alibaba Cloud did see its revenue grow by 6% year over year, but Alibaba's cloud adjusted EBITDA increased by 155% year over year, so it more than doubled. And this is due to the company running off that low margin revenue and basically trading it for higher margin and much more profitable revenue. So they're seeing the profitability of Alibaba Cloud increase dramatically right now. We can also see that Alibaba's international business did grow its revenue by 32% year over year. However, the losses at this business are increasing year over year. This is one of the business segments that Alibaba is investing a lot of money into. But I do think that these investments are paying off because the revenue in this business segment did grow by 32% year over year. Now in Kaneyao Smart Logistics Network, the revenue did grow by 16% and the company is adjusted EBITDA positive. Local Services Group did grow by 12%. However, this business segment is still unprofitable. And then the Digital Media and Entertainment Group grew its revenue by 4% year over year and this business segment is still unprofitable right now. So overall, it seems like these business segments of Alibaba are growing quite strong, and Alibaba Cloud's profitability is increasing quite significantly. All right, now moving on to the business highlights for Alibaba's e-commerce business, or the largest segment of the business. And this says, in April, we launched our new AI-powered platform, Wide Marketing Tool, which features automated bidding, optimized targeting, and performance dashboard visualization. This new product aims at increasing merchants' marketing spending and improving their marketing efficiency, and we have observed steady increase in merchant adoption. During the quarter, we achieved high single-digit online gross merchandise volume growth and double-digit order growth year over year. So it seems like Alibaba is seeing strong growth to its overall orders and gross merchandise volume being moved on the platform. However, again, this segment of the business's revenue did decline year over year, so it seems like Alibaba's overall take rate or the amount of profits that Alibaba produces versus its gross merchandise volume did go down year over year, and we're going to have to see why that was. Moving on, this says the number of 88 VIP members continued to increase by double digits year over year, surpassing 42 million during the quarter. Now, the 88 VIP is basically like Amazon Prime, but for Alibaba, and they are still seeing double digit year over year growth to the am amount of subscribers to 88 VIP, which I do think is a good thing. Now, over here on the right hand side, it says customer management revenue increased 1% year over year, primarily due to high single digit year over year growth in online gross merchandise volume, partly offset by a decline in take rate. The year over year decrease in take rate was primarily due to increasing proportion of gross merchandise volume generated from new models that currently have lower monetization rates. So it seems like Alibaba is currently introducing some new models that have lower monetization rates, which is why they are not producing as much revenue growth as gross merchandise volume growth. Now down here in the adjusted EBITDA segment, it says adjusted EBITDA declined by 1%, primarily due to the increase in investments and user experience, which resulted in enhanced user retention and increased purchase frequency and technology infrastructure. So Alibaba is making increased investments into its core business, which overall lowered its profit margins year over year. But overall, it does seem like this is increasing the user experience, retention, and the amount that users are actually buying on Alibaba's e-commerce platform. And overall, I do think that is a good thing to see. All right, moving on to Alibaba Cloud business highlights. This says, during this quarter, overall revenue excluding Alibaba consolidated subsidiaries grew 6% year over year driven by double-digit public cloud growth and increasing adoption of AI-related products. AI-related product revenue continued to grow at triple digits year over year, which is over 100% year over year. The number of paying users using Alibaba's cloud platform increased by over 200% quarter over quarter. So Alibaba's AI platform is seeing massive growth right now. During the Paris 2024 Olympics, Alibaba's cloud technology, which enables remote video production and transmission through cloud infrastructure, overtook satellite as the primary means of broadcast for the first time in Olympics history. Additionally, this is the first Olympic Games to extensively use AI, with Alibaba's cloud AI technology deployed in 14 Olympic venues, 
to generate high fidelity 360 replays in real time. So for those of you who may not know, Alibaba Cloud was the Olympics provider this year. And I think that is a pretty big thing on the world stage for Alibaba to be the provider of the Olympics. So I think that this is great exposure for Alibaba's cloud technology, and it is a good thing to see as well. Now over here, once again, we can see that the adjusted EBITDA from Alibaba's cloud did grow by 155% year over year versus only 6% revenue growth. So the profitability of this business segment is growing significantly. All right, now this next screenshot shows us the year over year revenue growth for all of Alibaba's different business segments. And basically what we can see right here is that Alibaba's main big business segment did see struggling year over year revenue growth, but all of its different smaller business segments, which are kind of more like the startup business segments, did see strong year over year revenue growth, with most of them actually seeing double digit year over year revenue growth. And I do think that this is good to see because as time passes, I do think that these business segments will continue to become a larger and larger portion of Alibaba's business and ultimately create more profitability for Alibaba over time. Now, these next screenshots are from the conference call transcript, and this is from the CEO, where they say, Looking to the medium and long term, we are confident that Alibaba's cloud's overall revenue, excluding Alibaba consolidated subsidiaries, will return to double-digit growth in the second half of the fiscal year, with gradual acceleration thereafter. So basically, Alibaba is saying that its cloud business segment is going to start seeing double-digit revenue growth in the second half of this year, and then over time, they are actually expecting the overall revenue growth for the Alibaba cloud to accelerate as time passes, which I do think is a pretty bullish thing for Alibaba overall, especially since we are seeing that the profitability of this business segment is also exploding. The CEO also says, this new fiscal year is a pivotal one for Alibaba, as we set our strategic direction and realize the successes of our transformation. We are fully confident in Alibaba's sustained healthy development into the future. So this is going to be the year where Alibaba really sees its transformation or its turnaround come into effect. And as I said earlier on in this video, Alibaba has been focusing on increasing its overall profitability. You can think of Alibaba as going through its year of efficiency right now, like Meta did. And now they are saying that this next year, their fiscal year 2025, is where they are going to bear the fruits of what they did over the past couple of years. So we should see Alibaba's profits and its margins start to expand in 2025 in a pretty big way. Now, moving on, these are just some screenshots from my own research that I did here. And this is China's cloud market share right here. And we can see that Alibaba Cloud has about 39% market share in overall China's cloud market. And it is the number one leader right here. So Alibaba has a significant market share in China's cloud market, and this market is projecting to grow significantly. In fact, the public cloud in China is projected to see a compounded annual growth rate to the revenue of 20.75% all the way out to 2029 and result in a market volume of 154 billion US dollars by 2029. So with Alibaba being the leader in the public cloud market in China, and with the public cloud expected to grow by over 20% annually over the next five years, I think that this means that Alibaba is going to see some pretty strong tailwinds to its business, especially its cloud business, and see strong revenue growth over the coming years. All right, so let's head back over to Stock Unlock really quickly and take a look at Alibaba's price today. So in the stock market, the company is currently worth about $172 billion. So if we go $172.25 billion and we subtract the net cash position of $55.8 billion, then this means that Alibaba has an enterprise value of about $116 billion today. Now, I also did the math and in the trailing 12 months, Alibaba has now done $23.8 billion US dollars in operating cash flow which means that the business is trading for an enterprise value to operating cash flow of only 4.89 right now. Now, the reason that I am using operating cash flow is because Alibaba is investing a lot of money into capital expenditures to grow its AI business. And the company does believe that it is getting high returns on this capital expenditures right now. And there was actually a quote from the CEO in the transcript that said, whenever Alibaba stands up a new server for its cloud, it is immediately running at full capacity. So there is a significant amount of demand for Alibaba's cloud in China right now. So they are seeing high returns on this capital investment and the capital investments are quite large. And for those reasons, I do believe that focusing on Alibaba's operating cash flow will give us the best look into the company's potential profitability and valuation today. 
just like I do with Amazon, by the way. And in my opinion, an enterprise value to operating cash flow of 4.89 is very cheap because that is basically an operating cash flow yield of 20% on the business's price today. In other words, Alibaba could deliver roughly a 20% return to its shareholders through its operating cash flows if the company wanted to. In other words, the company could buy back roughly 20% of its shares or pay a 20% dividend on its market cap today if the company wanted to once again, which is a very high return to shareholders. So now let's quickly head over to Stock Unlock's discounted cash flow calculator right here and project out Alibaba's operating cash flow over the next five years. And in this DCF, I am saying that Alibaba is going to grow its operating cash flow by 5% annually over the next five years, which I personally think is very conservative. And I do believe that Alibaba will do more growth in this over the next five years. I am also saying that the company will buy back 6% of its shares on an annual basis over the next five years. And I actually do think that Alibaba can do this because in the most recent quarter, they bought back 2.4% of their shares in just one quarter, which is basically 10% of the shares on an annual basis. So I do think that 6% share buybacks is possible for Alibaba to do over the next five years. I'm also expecting them to grow their dividend at 5% annually, which is in line with the operating cash flow growth. And I am also saying that Alibaba's price to operating cash flow will expand to 10, which is well below the company's five-year average of roughly 16. But this is still slight multiple expansion from where the stock is trading today, because the stock is trading for about seven times operating cash flow, not enterprise value to operating cash flow, but actual market cap to operating cash flow. It's about seven today. And when we enter in these metrics, we get a compounded annual growth rate to the share price of about 16% annually. And if we scroll down and take a look at the actual operating cash flow growth right here, we can see that this is not a significant amount of operating cash flow growth for Alibaba. And again, I do think that the company will actually outperform 5% annual operating cash flow growth over the next five years, especially as the Alibaba cloud segment of the business continues to grow strong and see strong profit growth as well. In other words, I think that this is a very conservative and pessimistic DCF calculation right here. And even on my pessimistic numbers, the stock could produce a market beating return of about 16% compounded annual growth over the next five years. And for those reasons, I do still believe that Alibaba is cheap in the stock market today, and I am going to be holding the position in my portfolio. I have no intention of selling the stock anytime soon, because it is a relatively small position in my portfolios. And I understand the China risk, but I honestly do believe that the stock is pricing in the China risk and more. And personally, I do not think that China wants to completely derail their most successful companies and their profitability going forward. In fact, I actually think that it is in China's best interest to make their market more investor friendly and to actually reduce regulations because it's in China's best interest for their companies to be as successful as possible and get their market caps up as high as possible to get foreign investors' dollars coming into the economy. So over time, I do think that China is going to continue reducing regulation and allowing their businesses to succeed because show me the incentive and I will show you the outcome. And I do believe that China is incentivized to see their businesses succeed and see them do as well as they possibly can over the long term. So for those reasons, I'm going to continue holding Alibaba. I think that it is cheap in the market today, and I do believe that the stock will produce market beating returns going forward. And with all that being said, that is going to wrap up the video for today, everyone. And if you did enjoy this video, then please remember to leave a like on it. And if you are new here and you want to see more stock market related content like this, then please consider subscribing to my channel as well. But with that being said, that's going to wrap up the video. So thank you all so much for watching. As always, I truly do appreciate it. And I really hope to see you all again in my next video.